All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Happy Sunday, and welcome to another episode of the Raw Intuition Health Show. It is so great to see everybody here. I see the chat's already uh, buzzing. So, hey, what's up, Mallory, Tessa? Thanks for being here. Great to see you. Uh, guys, today I am very excited about uh, this episode. We've got a really special guest for you, and we're going to be talking with Dr. Eduardo Carassa, and he has been living a raw vegan lifestyle and eating this way uh, for more than 17 years. He's written several books on health and healing. Uh, he is a frugivore, a clinical nutritionist, health and wellness coach, and the founder of Frugal Health. Uh, he has extensive experience as a speaker with stints at TEDx Talks in Brazil, uh, nutrition and health events, colleges, teaching postgraduate courses, and, and much more. So he has studied raw foodism and fasting with the world's leading raw foodists and hygienists in Brazil and abroad. And he is one of the main promoters in Brazil uh, of raw foodism and, and a pioneer in promoting forgiverism uh, in Brazil. So it is an honor to, to have Dr. Carassa here with us. And uh, let's bring him in. What's up, Dr. Carassa? Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. Thanks a lot for allowing me to share a little bit of the knowledge that I have accumulated in the last 17 years and to spread my dream because I was really sick once and being able to heal myself without drugs, without surgery, without any complicated measure whatsoever, besides healthful living, it was the greatest pleasure of all. So it, it, it's my, it, it was, make, makes me alive, makes me feel alive to teach what I teach. So it's a yeah. pleasure. That's amazing. And and I would love to to hear more of, of this story of, you know, kind of your your history and, and how you got into this lifestyle. Um, you know, what uh what kind of got you started and, and if you could just give us a little bit of a background on on how that all happened, that would be awesome. It is pretty funny. It's a long story, but to make it really short, I was the sickest of the sickest child you can imagine. And when I was 17, I, I always played really well video games. I was really good with video games. But I was, my health was terrible and my coordination as an athlete and as a student was terrible. But with video games, I was really good. And when I was 17, I became one of the world best Counter-Strike players. Uh, so I started uh, traveling uh, Korea, Sweden, United States, and uh, France, and a lot of other countries to play Counter Strike professionally in tournaments and in uh, boot camps to practice for tournaments. So we were traveling all around the world to compete. And I was 17 years of age. I was already, I, I had already a lot of health issues, but started smoking, drinking, making a lot of money so you can buy a lot more junk food and, you know, uh, sleeping late because we were always practicing or playing. So that got me into a really worse situation than I, I ever was. So I was diabetic. I, I was about to do two surgeries. I was obese with 95 kilos, 210 pounds, something like that, 215 pounds. Huh. So I was pretty like, you know, I have to do something. And I... I was actually not worried about my health. I was trying to become a better Counter-Strike player. I was actually trying to come back to my highest level. That was at the beginning of when I was playing. I was still young, practicing, uh, doing kickboxing classes, uh, being really, really active. Because from 14 to 17, I become really, really active physically. And I was always you know, eating some rice and beans at home instead of eating a lot of junk food, smoking and drinking. So my health started to deteriorate a lot and I was looking for solutions for playing better. I was worried about my health, but not that much. And I tried a lot of medical doctors, you know, the best, some of the best medical doctors in Brazil. And they were always about surgery and drugs, drugs and surgery. And I was like, you know, they look obese and fat and sick and tired. I, 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 it didn't felt right. So I started looking, looking, looking. I tried all the naturopathic medicine that that was around, 
And one day out of the blue, I found raw food diet on, on a website. And I was like, raw food diet? What is, what is it? <laughs> I typed on Google and there was like so many answers. I cure heart disease, I cure diabetes, I cure cancer. Uh, how, raw foods are the way we were intended to eat. Uh, all animals eat this, this way. And I was like, wow, I tried everything. I didn't want to do a, two surgeries, one on my back, one in my nose. I felt like this is it. You know, like I could feel it that I found something. And I remember as it was today, I ran downstairs because I came back to live with my parents because I was losing my my spot on the team, on the counter team, because we were all traveling the world. So I didn't la- live with them anymore. Mm-hmm. So... I I went down downstairs and I said to my mom, mom, don't cook for me because I'm not eating cooked food anymore. <laughs> and she was like, what? You know, like people went insane in my house, like my, <laughs> my friends and family, girlfriend, everybody was like, what are you talking about? And that was it. Like 17 years, 17 and three months ago, 17 and four months ago, that happened and it changed my whole life and it was like the best ride I could ever imagine. I can't even imagine. I, I'm pretty sure I would be dead by now. And I'm pretty sure that I couldn't even dream of such a, a, a good, you know, sense of being alive, a good physiological functionality. I became in these 17 years because it takes time to accumulate health. But I have become way more intelligent. I have become way more resilient. I have slowed down the aging. I have become more fitter. I have become more successful. I have become more coordinated. I have become, you know, a better person emotionally, socially, uh, spiritually. Uh, I I cannot even, you know, count all the benefits that I got. But it was like, uh, as I say, and I'm a, I'm pretty. I, I always make sure. Uh, to be thankful for the people who helped me. And I have to be thankful for Douglas Graham, uh, Dr. Douglas Graham from the 80 10 10 diet. Mm-hmm. He saved my life back then, not just because of his work, but for pointing me for natural hygiene, the science of health. After I studied Dr. Herbert Shelton and the old hygienist, I knew what I had to do. And, you know, I, I, I did a 24 day water fast six months after starting a raw food diet. At home alone, I don't, you know, I don't suggest nobody to do the same, you know, like, but I did it. And in the end of it, I, my body was crying. It was two separate things, my body and my mind, my soul and my microbiota. It, it was like the host and the, you know, like the, uh, uh, it, it was two separate things. It was different from crying in any kind of normal day, right? Mm-hmm. And and I'm I'm not the typical person that cries for almost anything, and it made me cry. And I swear to myself that I was going to teach this for the most people that I could in my whole life, because I had to save the world. Right? I had yeah. this insight, and here I am, 17 years later. Wow, that's amazing. And and I can relate to so much of what you were saying, just like the transformation in like every aspect of the life, even yeah, coordination. I got better at sports too when I got into this lifestyle. You know, my coordination got better. Uh, you know, and I emotionally, like you said, it's just it's such a transformative uh, lifestyle and way of life. And so, um, yeah, that's amazing. And and yeah, uh, Doug Graham, Doctor Doug Graham, he's he's been a uh, an inspiration for a lot of people in this lifestyle. And, and that's great that you found him and uh, he got you started going this direction. Um, and now you've written, how many books have you written now? 10 books, something yeah. like that? Yeah, 10, 10 books in Portuguese, but I translated. I'm not at my office right now. Uh, uh, sorry, everybody at home for the, the, the background. I'm, I'm not what I um, usually am, but I have translated one of the books the Hygienic Fasting Nature Surgery to English and is also available on Amazon, on print on demand and in Kindle. I'm pretty sure I I don't I don't brag myself. I don't think I'm I'm good or you know, but I really think that with the books, 
I have advanced natural hygiene to because every hygienist have contributed with the new science that have come out with more knowledge that we are gathering every kind every every generation of hygienists so with the with the new science that is around about lifestyle medicine i have contributed a lot to the movement with the books unfortunately uh, all my content is in portuguese so most of people you know cannot access it mm. but i have bring brought all the science that was lacking the raw food movement for the comprehension for people to you know make it easier to understand that Health is produced by healthful living, as Shelton used to say. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And um, what what are some of the the newer, you know, with when when looking at the science of natural healing and and whether it be fasting or raw foods, what what are some of the, you know, the things that got you most excited or that you found to be, you know, the, the most uh, maybe eye opening that that you didn't realize in the beginning? Nice, nice question. Uh, one of the things that, you know, in the beginning, I was really worried. I, I was worried about doing a recipe, maybe blending mangoes with celery to do a salad dressing. I was like, you know, you, you don't know, you, you, you don't have the clinical experience that I have now by being a nutritionist for almost a decade, uh, because I've been in this lifestyle for 17 years, but I have graduated in nutrition university for almost a decade now. Uh, because here in Brazil is like five years of university, right? It's a longer course. So with the clinical experience that I have, with the scientific experience that I have, and with the empirical experience that I have, nowadays I know a lot better what is what I should focus on or what should I, you know, not carry too much about it. For example, in the beginning, I was really paying attention to food combined. And for sure, back then my digestive system was really weaker but nowadays i for sure still believe in food combining still think it's a big it, it's a deal but it's not as big as the other parts of natural hygiene for example people don't understand that exercise is a thing for every day people do three times a week and yeah. walking you know running a little bit but all the scientific evidence shows that you have to be really fit. You have to be really fit in every kind of uh, uh, fitness aspect, like neurological, uh, muscular, and, and anaerobic, aerobic. So these parameters do matter. So that's one of the things that I didn't realize back then. But for sure, I was exercising. But I didn't, for example, the new data on tennis and racket sports, mm -hmm. that people who play racket sports, for example, tennis in particular, live almost 10 years more. For example, comparing to calisthenics or running, it's just three years more. Mm -hmm. So there is the neurological part to it, but I also believe there's the hit part to it, high-intensity training. So if you have bursts of high-intensity, you know, it's... We know that it's you you get better health benefits doing less time of work but having high intensity. Probably be, one of the reasons is orbitis, right? What well, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. So you have to stress the body in good ways, right? The other part I think that's so but so so underrated, not just in science, but in in the raw food movement in general, even natural hygiene, is chronobiology. We have to, one second. Uh, we have to understand that we have a biological clock in our brains and every cell of our bodies have, uh, a, have also a biological clock. So the master clock, controls the other uh, cells, tissues, and organs clock, right? So these have to be synchronized. So a lot of people who criticize my videos in Portuguese, they're like, ah, you are talking about diet, but my dad 
my 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 grandpa lived up to a hundred and he was eating pork and bacon and a lot of sh bad stuff you know like and he lived to a hundred and i'm like yeah for sure but like for 15 years my dad for example he 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 was growing a farm he was the uh, he was the, the the families from italian descendants that were coming from the war to brazil to migrate to brazil so they were really really poor mm -hmm. and he didn't see electric lights until he was 20 years of age Wow. Just when he came to the city to work and to uh, do university, he was he started to see electric lights. So the guy was my dad was like a bull. You could see his his bone structure was like so huge, mm -hmm. and his what we call secondary sexual characteristics, the the development of these secondary sexual characteristics was pretty different than the average. You know the the amount of hair. The, the size of the bones, even in the in, even in the fingers, uh, the probably because of high testosterone and higher uh, a better uh, endocrinology and uh, endocrinal equilibrium, the mm -hmm. hormone uh, the 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 balance between the hormones between testosterone and estrogen, etc. So he was a pretty big guy, although if you take a look at his childhood, he was weaned at six years of age. He breast milk, he, he breastfed and for six years. Oh. You know, he 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 grew up like doing a lot of exercise and eating primarily fruits and vegetables because there was it was what they had around, they had available. And it was insane. He could smoke, drink, and you know, be merry and don't pay the fiddler. He 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 was different, you know, like but it was because of his childhood, what we call metabolic programming. Mm -hmm. So that's what, one of the reasons that I, I I say like, yeah, for sure. Your, your grandpa lived to 100, but he didn't have electric lights. So he was watching Netflix until uh, midnight and having dinner at 10 p.m. You know, like you're short. For example, what I tell my patients uh, that sleep is the primary foundation of like our health, because if you think about it, uh, let's do a simple math. Uh, human beings a hundred years ago were sleeping nine hours per day. That, that is a, a, a epidemiological data. And now we're sleeping seven hours per day. If you take two hours per day less in one year, that is more than 700 hours. 700 hours divided by 24 you have more than 30 days, 40 days. It's like, if you think about it, it's insane. Staying awake for 40 days, it's like, you know, you're asking for something bad to happen with your body. So yeah. the repair mode happens at night. So if you see electric lights, you're dampening down, you're, you're, you're blocking the secretion of melatonin. And melatonin is, as we call, the dark hormone. If we don't see the dark hormone, things go haywire, you know. So uh, we need melatonin in higher levels. So chronobiology and chrononutrition is two big, most underrated uh, topics in the health science, in, the, in natural hygiene, the science of health. Yeah, that's. I'm so glad that you mentioned uh, just the the biological clock and and the importance of sleep. Because yeah, those. Uh, I I feel like especially in the raw food community, um, people talk about how they need so much less sleep. So, in your opinion, you think that we should even if we're eating a raw diet, should we still be sleeping the regular nine hours? There's no evidence that diets or lifestyles should reduce the amount of sleep. There's only evidence that we're sleeping too little. Yeah. And people think that they don't need as much sleep because, one, they see a lot of electric lights. Mm -hmm. If they cut out electric lights, uh, for example, what I do at home, I just stay in the dark with my cell phone and with my laptop, with uh, a blue filter uh, uh, modes like a app like Flux or Twilight for the cell phone. And that's it. If it, when it's 7.30 p.m., I just fall asleep. I cannot stay awake. For sure, 
it's not like I go to sleep 7.30 every day in the my life. I Yesterday, I probably went to bed at 10 p.m. But still, uh, for sure, we need nine hours sleep. We have a lot of data to support that. It's not just sleep at night. It's siesta as well. That is a, a also one important part. Mm. And also, uh, for sure, they start like to eating a lot less calories when they adopt a raw food diet. So they under eat a lot. And that probably pay, plays a part and they, they feel they need less sleep. Because when we fast, we actually lose a little bit of the necessity to sleep. So there's... You know, there's several parts we have to uh, consider when we talk about sleep, but uh, I don't think we reduce our need for sleep with the raw food diet. Uh, and actually, uh, people just be misled because they feel so much more energy, they feel so much more alive, they have more uh, energy, It for sure because of the diet. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, they confuse this with like needing less sleep. The body doesn't need less sleep, in my humble opinion. And we still have to see scientific evidence to support that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so you also mentioned hormesis and giving the body good stress. Now, I know there's a lot of, you know, talk online about plants are trying to kill us and you know they have all these chemicals in them that are harmful to us um would you say that these chemicals that are often villainized by many of the other diet communities out there um would you say that these plants are trying to kill us or do these compounds actually have a hormetic effect and, and benefit us I don't like to trash talk anybody, and I, I, I like I, I prefer to be really highly respectful to everybody. Sure. But some stuff that you see and read in the internet, it's quite funny. It seems that I don't know, maybe people are crazy, or they, you know, they had like some neurological damage when they were a child, or they're try really trying to sell something. Yeah. Or they just don't read read the data, you know. Like if you read the data, there's no, you know, there's no how, there's no way to discuss it, you know. There's no because that's what that's one of the big problems today. People are not being led by scientists. Right. People are being led by uh, digital influencers. So if I'm a lawyer, I never read a scientific paper. I can talk about diet and nutrition. And it's legal. And if I get famous because people are, you know, the, the public are naive. Like McDougal used to say, people love to hear good things about their bad habits. Yeah. And like, you know, if you talk something good about their bad habits, like I eat meat, you should eat meat and meat is good for you. There's no scientific basis to suggest that because uh, for sure, maybe a little bit of animal products, we still cannot talk about it because... We, but the best part is the blue, the, the best uh, data we have out there is the blue zones. 4% animal protein, uh, practically 96% plant, plant material. So we cannot kill all the, we cannot erase all the science that is out there. Even the anthropoid primates, the, our relative cousins in nature, our most close relative cousins in nature, they eat primarily plant-based. They eat like fruits and vegetables. So it's pretty common sense. And it's quite, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to classify it as, you know, dumb, crazy, or, you know, like pirates of raw, pirates of the uh, food movement trying to sell their products or, you know. But I think even then they like to eat, right? Even then they, they're teaching in boosting like a uh, low carb diets they are eating low carb diets right maybe yeah. cheating here and there but still eating you know a lot of so yeah uh so talking about that we can actually come come together with your last question and with the question of releases that's one of the things that i think is also extremely underrated the influence of the environment of being around plants of being in nature in our health because it's not just the direct route but the indirect route 
because if you are in nature, if you are in like a, you know, a, a, a farm, you are more prone to exercise. You are more prone to get sunshine. You are more prone to sleep early. You are more prone to breathe what we call phytocytes, these invisible gases that plants produce that actually influence our immune system. They can also help to regulate blood sugar. They uh, Plants also influence our neurological system, like reducing the parasympathetic activity in our brains. You know, plants make us more calm. You know, not just eating them, just being around of them. So I, 17 years ago, I used to live in the city for seven hours Seven, more than seven years now, probably, I have been living in a small city and I have 350 fruit trees planted on my yard. I planted all by myself. Wow. Back then when they were small, I I didn't care too much about the place. I loved my house, but it, it was not such a emotional attachment. Nowadays, I have emotional attachment with my garden. It's not not because it's my garden. It's because being around plants makes you more calm. I, I don't know. It changes your physiology, changes your brain. So I like to be around there because being picking food out of the garden, you know, being changing and, you know, being around the plant, There's that's one of the most underrated also aspects in health. And we have a lot of data about it, how the nature setting can influence our health and can help to, there's a, a research from Ulrich. Yeah, I think his name, the name of the researcher is James Ulrich mm -hmm. in the 70s or in the 80s, that people who do a cholecystectomy, like is the remotion of the gall, gallbladder, I think you guys call it. Mm -hmm. If you remove the gallbladder by surgery, the ones, the patients that had a room that you they can see nature through the window of the room, they actually regenerated faster than the ones that couldn't see the 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 uh, window with nature, just saw the big city with through the window. So just by looking at nature, you can regenerate faster. And then he did the same research with putting plants on the rooms of these uh, of these Ill, the Ill people, and they actually regenerate faster as well. They they need less medication for pain. They they get better uh, grades by the nurses, like no complaining, you know, easy going. They were going faster to their homes, like give, uh, giving, uh, okay, you're good to come out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know the name in, that in English, mm -hmm. but like, it's insane. So, uh, for sure, being around plants are a must. We have evolved with them, eating them, and these chemicals are actually beneficial to us. But there are details we have for sure to talk. For example, if you take a look, at, I plant beans on my yard. If I eat the raw beans, there's a, a, a fresh bean that we eat here, like a green bean, mm -hmm. that you can eat green, and it's pretty tasty. But if you leave it ripe, he will become a seed. He's not more an edible food. He's just a seed to go to the ground and sprout a new plant. You cannot eat it. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to sprout the bean. I'm not saying bad about sprouting. I sprout some lentils and chickpeas and, you know, like uh, I sprout some stuff. And I, I, I like to do some recipes with it when I want. I like to gain weight, mm -hmm. but I don't feel my best. But I, I do. I'm not I'm not trash talking sprouting. I'm just saying that for sure, these foods become uh, tough, become uh, unpalatable and like uh, really hard because there's no more, there's no more, that's, that is no food anymore for us. But we do cook then and eat then. For sure, cooking break these cell walls and maybe uh, neutralize the uh, a lot of these toxins, but Still, we shouldn't be eating, you know, birds' food, uh, pigs' food, and all these foods there are for other animals. Yeah. For sure, the plants will have chemicals to protect them. But it's it's like I, I was eating figs yesterday. I mm. was in a farm until this morning. And most, because 
the bees and the those big black bees. I, I don't remember the name in English. Uh, a wasp. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasps, wasps, wasps. That's it. The wasps were all into the figs and into the persimmons. You mm. know that they were cracking already, so you could you cannot even touch them, or right. else you get really bite by them, like several bites, because it was the whole tree with bees and wasps with it. <laughs> so, but I got a lot of unripe figs, so I just burned my mouth mm. because they were unripe. So the plant doesn't want you to eat the unripe food. So for sure, there's still chemicals to protect it because the food wants actually to become ripe for you when they give themselves to you. Until they're ripe, they have chemicals to protect themselves. Plants can't walk. Plants can't run from the, the, from the danger. So they have to produce their own chemicals to protect themselves. But they also want to be eaten so they can reproduce themselves. It's just the logical, you know, part. So there's uh, it, w one of the biggest reasons I think is that is that they don't show the science. If you show me the scientific articles, because if you show just one article saying that one plant has, you know, lactin, and lactin is bad, the, the lactin paradox, and you know, Dr. Gunbury, blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah. And if you if you if you think about it. They are just showing one uh, scientific article about one just detail. But you have to look at the whole picture. If you look at the whole picture, the blue zones always eat legumes. They have like higher anti-nutrient status. But they still live a longer longer life than any of these doctors that are talking, trash talking, you know, anti-nutrients. So I think it's insane. People just look at one detail and like protein in meat or calcium in dairy products. You know, it, it's silly. It, they're talking about nutrition with one nutrient instead of looking at a billion nutrients. Yes. You know, so it's it, it's silly. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I, thank you for explaining that. Uh, I think that was really helpful. People are people are really enjoying the the conversation here. Uh, Goddess Renee said, really enjoying this conversation. So, um, yeah, this has been great. Uh, so you you also mentioned, you know, so I know you you grew up as a gamer, right? And so, um, you know, you were looking at screens a lot, and you, and you said you grew up in the city. Um, I'm I'm guessing you were consuming, you know, your diet had a lot of stimulants in it, perhaps. Did you drink a lot of stimulants or, you know, eat stimulating foods? Because um, I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm just tying in like, um, like the healing process, right? So the, the autonomic nervous system is so important for, for the body to regulate the healing process. Um, what can you, can you talk a little bit about that and, and why it's so important to support the nervous system? Uh, I know you talked about like electricity and, and all that stuff and how it impacts us. So just wondering like how, how our lifestyles are impacting our nervous system. Yeah. I, I, I don't like to separate the physiological systems in our bodies because I think they mm. all work connectively. Sure. So if you are actually, for example, if you're eating foods that help to heal the, the heart, you're actually, the same foods that are helping to heal the heart are helping to heal the brain and the, the stomach. But that's one of the parts that we have to talk about. There is no cure, but regeneration. Because the body, like, if I cut myself, I can drink something to cure it? No. The body will get the food because the food doesn't heal. The body gets the food, the raw material, and repair the, the place with stitching, with the, the uh, scarring, and then, you know, closing the, the scar. So that, that's one of uh, important part that we have to talk. The body regenerates all at once. Like there's a, a research from Walter Longo saying that uh, the name of the research is quite cool. A fasting mimicking diet induces multiple system regeneration. So the body has to do a lot of things. One is processing food for being able to have these nutrients to repair itself, right? So the less we do, the more we repair. And there's a lot of science to back it up nowadays. Well, we as hygienists have seen it because fasting for sure is the maximum regeneration mode that the body can induce. 
So with that being said, when you start like eating less calories, when you start to sleep more, nowadays we know that, that there's influence from the microbiota in regeneration. We know the influence of like being nature. You can actually reduce the pain in chronic diseases just by being nature. It's insane. Just by looking at nature, you 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 repair faster, right? So uh, that's what I, I want to say before answering your question mm-hmm. is that all the parts of our lifestyle influences or regeneration mode. So probably being a good vitamin D status, I never actually did the research on it, but probably being on a good vitamin D status actually enhances regeneration. Being underslaps increases the all chronic diseases because the sleep is the moment that we repair. And for example, uh, there's a lot of data to support that fasting actually can induce BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So we grow new brain cells, what we call neurogenesis, and we protect the cells that we have in the brain. We call uh, neuroprotection. So there's a lot to talk when we talk about like healing the nervous system because the food, the exercise, the fasting, the, the sleep, all will help the body to in, induce this repair mode. But what we have to talk the most that we have seen so far by science is that fasting induces what we call, it turn on, turns on the longevity genes, AMPK, FOXO, and sirtuins. Probably uh, the listeners who have already uh, heard uh, David Sinclair talks uh, he always talk about the longevity genes. Mm-hmm. So these are repairing genes. And we down-regulate mTOR and IGF-1. So food is a big part and protein is also a big part in this. If we eat more you know, protein and calories, we enter into a mitogenesis mode. So that is a growth mode, but it actually reduces the repair mode. So it's like a seesaw. The more you eat and protein, even even more protein, the more you you grow and and divide and sell uh, cells. The more you fast, the less calories, the more fruits and vegetables, because these phyto, these these fruits and vegetables also have what we call hormetic hormetic phytonutrients. So these phytonutrients also induces hormesis. So that's what I'll I'll I'll. Uh, uh, other underrated part of natural hygiene is the soil. It's the stressed plants that produce more phytochemicals that are beneficial to us. So if we want a better health, we have to take better care of the soil. One of the things is, uh, I'm not going to into the details, but we are pooping in the water instead of pooping in the ground. All animals in nature poop on the ground. And the nutrients come back to the soil, feed the soil that feeds the plant and the plant feeds us back. So there's a lot of uh, things to talk about, like when we talk about repairing, because these vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, antioxidants are part of the repairing system. So you cannot uh, repair a house without the raw materials. And the raw materials are the food and the nutrients that are inside of it. So we, 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 we know these phytonutrients to be bioactive, doing a lot of stuff in our bodies. We know, for example, uh, antioxidants are important for brain health. So if you want to protect your neurological system, we have to reduce inflammation, reduce oxidative, oxidative stress. How we do that? Fruits and vegetables in a healthy lifestyle. Because if you sleep, if you fast, they are all anti-inflammatory, antioxidant uh, mechanisms, uh, uh, tools to use it. So for sure, the the neurological system controls all the other systems because it's what it sends the signals, it's what controls everything. So there's a lot of data to support the exercise, diet and lifestyle and fasting and sleep influences a lot our neurological system. Neuro neurodegeneration 
or neurogenesis and neuroprotection. But still, when these influence the neurological system, it also influences the cardiovascular system, the cancer uh, uh, protecting mechanisms or the cancer promoting mechanisms like angiogenesis and others, and induces, you know, like protects the bone. So I, I don't like to talk just about one uh, part of or of the of the body mm. as because I hope I see as a whole, but for sure there's a big link in science between the neurological system and sleep. So the less we sleep, the less our neurological system function, uh, and the less for sure there is the capacity to heal for because you know there's even reduced uh one thing that is quite cool is that most people that most people don't know about the Marlar reaction end products, but these are cooked food toxins. And these cooked food toxins actually AGEs, advanced glycation end products, also reduce the activity of the sirtuins. Mm. So this enzyme, this protein that is actually turned on to repair our bodies, is actually damaged by AGEs. So there you go. One thing, eating cooked food uh, damages your repairing system. There's the sirtuins. So, uh, you know, but it's all connected, right? The yeah. neurological system is connected to the, uh, uh, the, the, or master clock, the nucleus, the suprachiasmatic nucleus is actually uh, a part of the neurological system that is a part of all the repairing system. Because if you don't induce the sleep, if you're not chrono adapted, chrono synchronized, if your brain is not like knowing what time of the day it is, you're not in, inducing repair when you should because you're seeing watching netflix at midnight and eating at 10 p.m so your body's still in in in, in function mode and not in repair mode you should go to sleep so i i don't know if that was exactly what you you meant with the, the question but yeah yeah no that was perfect uh super informative um and i love that you you touched on the <clears throat> you know raising bdnf and and lowering mtor um, cause I think, you know, with everybody getting so obsessed over protein and, you know, getting in as much protein as they can, um, would you say that that would be counterproductive to, um, you know, longevity and, um, you know, since we're stimulating that mTOR pathway so much? For sure. I mean, it's not like a, uh, maybe, but for sure there's a, Luigi Fontana, one of the main medical doctors, research uh, gerontologists, as we call people who study aging, he has a lot of research showing that a re pro protein restriction is way more important than caloric restriction for health. Mm -hmm. So calorie restriction is like the butts, you know, everybody already heard about the, the mice and the, the primates, they were caloric restricted and they live longer, they have better health. But people haven't heard about protein restriction as much. And uh, Harper, a scientist in the 70s, showed that there's a absolute dependency of methionine in cancer cells. So when cancer cells are really deprived of methionine, because, for example, in meat, in 80 grams of meat, you have around 750 milligrams of methionine. That is a sulfur amino acid that is highly highly contained in animal products, but it's re really low in, in vegetable material, but even lower in fruits and vegetables. Because if you go for a quinoa in 100 grams of quinoa, around 100 grams, you have 300 grams of methionine. But uh, if you if you go for a banana, for example, you have like uh, I don't remember, but 20 uh, milligrams of methionine. So the better way to methionine restrict is fruits and vegetables. And as the science have shown, methionine actually stimulates, methionine and lysine actually stimulates mTOR and stimulate these growth pathways, inhibit autophagy and apoptosis. So, you know, uh, there's, you, you take a look at sweet potato. Okinawa eats 70% of their diet in sweet potato. Sweet potato is like, in terms of micronutrients, it's a, it's a banana. 
the low methionine content. And if the, the amount of methionine intake and protein intake of these blue zones are low and they are lived to 100 without any uh, breakdown of their mental capacities or their health, it's for sure because of the low protein content is one of the underrated stuff out there in nutrition. So for sure, more protein than we need. We can look buzzed, buffed, uh, good, for sure. It, it, it gives a better appearance to the muscles. And I'm not saying against it. Mm -hmm. You look stronger, but you die faster. And that's mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. With, with lab animals, what we call preclinical pre data, and also with uh, human data, always suggesting that higher protein intake is not advantageous. It's actually uh, harmful. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I want to I want to touch a little more on on your book that you've recently had translated to English, um, since that'll be something that uh, the viewers can can get and and dive into. Um, so yeah, I mean you've touched on um, you know the anti aging benefits or the you know just the healing properties of of getting in more fruits and vegetables and and also your experience with fasting uh could you go a little bit more into what you cover in the book and and you know how it can help people out for sure uh the book i i prefer to do each book just by just from one topic and detail every kind of question on that topic so the, the book is just about fasting. It doesn't talk about food and nutrition. It doesn't talk anything else about fasting. Mm. But I did several long fasts during the 17 years. I did a 39-day water fast. The documentary of the 39-day water fast is actually my channel in Portuguese, Dr. Coraça Saúde Frugal. But there's subtitles to English, but still, it's in half in Portuguese, half in English from all the people that I interviewed during the documentary because I went to Tanglewood's Wellness Center uh, of Lauren Lockman, Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. So I interviewed a lot of people for the documentary and uh, and Lauren as well. So some part is in English you can watch in my channel. But the English version, a little bit different, is actually in Lauren Lockman channel uh also, in uh, it's completely in, in English if people want to watch. And I have two other documentaries in Portuguese. The one reached uh, more than a million and five hundred thousand views. Uh, so I have a lot of fasting uh, these seventeen years. Intermittent fasting, I do eighteen hours per day for now seventeen years, but a lot of water fast from thirty nine, twenty four, twenty three, nineteen. Several of 15 days, several of 10 days, several of seven days, several of smaller duration from five to three and two to one days. So I, I think I can speak about fasting, you know, like, uh, and there's a lot of science to show that fasting is actually a part of healthful living that is actually underestimated by everybody because we eat too much. We eat too frequently, even though I'm, for example, I eat twice a day, but I always have food to eat. Like I have five kilos of food every day and I don't have to exercise as much. And the body needs some rest once in a while. The Hunzas, for example, the famous tribe in the Himalayan mountains, they, they went through hard winters. So they went through out without food and they were just drying uh, apricots for uh, for the winter so they had to fast we had to fast in nature pretty frequently and that have a lot of physiological scientific benefits they're pretty well established reduce reduction in inflammation oxidative stress uh, uh modulation of the microbiota of hormones uh there's reduction in insulin glycemia there are, uh, you know, there's all the physiological parameters that we can measure measure during fasting are enhanced. And that the physiological parameters, what we call the biomarkers, show that you are going to live better and longer. So, uh, and for sure, they're, they're, the instinct doesn't lie. When you are sick, you don't want to eat. When you, you know, you are stressed, you don't feel like eating. 
for sure, if you pervert the food, you can eat. That's one of the things that most people talk up to me. Oh, but I had like a stress with my husband, with my wife, blah, blah, blah. And I, I could eat a lot, for sure, of ice cream. You couldn't eat a lot of watermelon. When you try to eat watermelon when you're sick or sad, it, it doesn't feel like it. But when you change the food too much, and it's not more, it's not food anymore. Then you can, you know, pervert your instincts. So yeah, fasting made a lot of difference in my life, and I'm pretty help, happy for it. For sure, I could even fast more than I had uh, have uh, all these years because there's too much food around every time, you know. So uh, there's a lot of things to talk to it because. Fruits and vegetables, a frugivore diet is actually a semi-fast. That, that is an important part to talk because it's so low in calories, so low in protein, you know, that and so high in phytonutrients that you turn on these longevity genes. That you are always, you know, like in the growth mode is in equilibrium with the repair mode. But if I start eating more protein, even vegetable protein like a, a quinoa, lentils, sprouted. I feel worse. Hmm. I feel I, I get bigger. I get a better shape, you know, but, you know, so, yeah, for sure. Uh, one of the things that I have to mention about fasting is after this 17 years, none, for sure, I have accumulated health and I'm way better than ever. But the this last 39 day war fast did a lot to my health that, even this 17 years of helpful living couldn't do it. Mm. So because of Shelton's influence of hearing his podcast, he, hearing, not podcast, right? It was lectures from the 50s when he was lecturing. I have the audios until today. And I knew that I could get better results with my back, that I had back issues since I was really young. So I got better results with my back because of this last 39 day water fast even the hygiene life hygiene lifestyle and even like 15 day water fast couldn't help as much as the 39 day water fast so i i'm planning to do another 30 day, 39 day water fast maybe this time going to 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 north health center in california or maybe do it at home i don't know yet but i'm planning to do another 39 day water fast and the health benefits in terms of preclinical trials, and to answer your question after speak babbling so much, uh, it, the data on preclinical trials that in, in in animals and also in clinical trials uh, showing that intermittent fasting, uh, chrononutrition, time restricted feeding. All these kinds of fasting that people, for example, one of the things that people don't realize it is that they do intermittent fasting until noon, drinking a lot of coffee. And then they have like a glass of wine and eat pasta at 9 p.m., 10 p.m. So they're not paying attention to chronobiology and chrononutrition. That is well, a really, you know, it's silly because that's a big part of fasting. Or people are trying to do a water fast, but they're going to sleep at midnight watching some movie. How like you know, how do you think the repair mode actually functions? It's just fast. You don't have to sleep anymore. You know, people don't pay attention to a hygienic fast. And that's why the name of the book implies. It's not any kind of fast. It's not a juice fast. It's not intermittent fasting. I'm talking about hygienic fast for sure. I teach people in the book about uh, intermittent fasting. I talk a lot about the science. I talk a lot about the, the empirical uh the, the clinical evidence, for example, there's a case report from Sh Herbert Shelton, one of his patients that fasted for 40, 50 days, 45 days, for three days, something like that. The guy was impotent, had a, a enlarged prostate, and I, I was also deaf for 10 years. He couldn't hear anything for 10 years. He just fasted and he could hear again. Oh. Imagine, imagine couldn't, he can hear it like, there is no medicine. There is no pill. There is no surgery that it, you know like can do what fasting does. Uh, Walter Longo has a research that I I used. Uh, I I quote on the book. I referenced also 
that fasting induces uh, in, induces energy and three different beta cell regeneration. Mm. That means that like if he tried the, his fasting mimicking diet, right? It's just a, a caloric a severe caloric restriction plant based diet. Uh, you, you guys can watch in Walter Longo fasting mimicking diet to understand a little bit more. And then he shows signing uh, a, a paper on cell, like one of the most scientific uh, 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 journals, respected journals, that you can actually uh, induce uh, uh, turn on a gene that is actually only turned on when you're in your mother's womb. So imagine that, like turning on a gene that is only turned on when your mother womb, but you can turn it on just by fasting when you're an adult. And it can actually turn on this gene that induces beta cell regeneration. That That's what the, the type 1 diabetic have lost. You can actually produce the cells that it's impossible to regain. You know, like it's show me any kind of science that medical the medical usual model can induce better uh, ngn3 driven beta cell regeneration you know they can use like insulin they can have like metformin for uh, reducing your glycemia but you know regenerate a, a cell in the pancreas it's like and people underestimate this ancient healing process that started with the first living organisms in the planet like one billion years ago it's like plants regenerate through fasting fungi regenerate through fasting all animals in nature regenerate through fasting but the human beings no that's crazy you're going to die from it so yeah the book talks a lot i think it's the most completed and updated uh and comprehensive book in fasting out there in the planet uh in terms of natural hygiene right and in terms of co coming together the science with a practical application because hygienists have been, been fasting people for 200 years. Herbert Shelton fasted 40,000 people throughout his career. So we cannot just look at the science because the science is too way behind it. Mm. You know, like yeah. what, what these hygienists have seen. But, you know, that's pretty much it. The book is a must read for everybody that's interested in health because I think I... I came together with all the details you, you must know before trying to fast. But for sure, don't fast by yourself. Go to a fasting clinic. And before thinking of fast, read a lot of books about fasting. Read the hygienic fasting nature surgery and start and study natural hygiene because fasting is just a detail. Fasting is not the be all and end all. People just come to me, they watch the documentaries, they're like, I want to fast because I want to heal like you did. And I'm like, yeah, but I have been also, besides fasting, living a, a, a natural hygiene, almost perfect lifestyle for 17 years. You cannot just take one part and think that is like the panacea and going to heal everything. You have to understand that fasting for sure, it's a main part of this healing process, but it's just one part. You have to put it all together. After the fast, before the fast, you have to change your habits. I saw a lot of people, for example, I had a, I had a, a lot of people that I've seen these 17 years that did long water fast, but in the end, they didn't study hygiene. They don't practice hygiene. In a year, there's, they get their pro problems back. So, Yeah, man, I... I... That, that was so great. I mean, and I think that's so important for people to understand. And it really, you know, as you were talking, I was just thinking how, you know, people definitely underestimate the body's ability to heal. But at the same time, I think, like you mentioned, they kind of overestimate the impact of just doing one single factor instead of looking at it holistically. And, and even just as you mentioned with with doing a hygienic fast instead of you know most i think most people get a little bit of a 
a skewed view about fasting because most people that at least I've seen online are fasting and at the same time they're still going to work or they're still like you said staying up watching movies um, staying on their electronics all the time so yeah I, th I think there that's such an important distinction to make is that there's a difference between a hygienic fast versus you know doing a, a fast and you know continuing to live your life as you do normally right and so it's so important to look at it holistically and uh, yeah i think that's that's so so well said by you on on all that Thanks. so yeah um all right well i i have linked your book in the description box of this video so uh, hopefully everybody will go check that out uh it's on amazon you can just order it right there and um yeah is, is there anything before we get into the q a that uh that you'd like to comment or you know bring bring up or did we did we cover did we miss anything uh, yeah there's always like you know <laughs> these health topics have like can branch themselves through hours, yeah, days, weeks, months of content. But I think the the main thing that people must understand is study, 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 practice, practice, practice. Study, 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 practice, practice, practice. I I I want to learn tennis right now, right? Because mm -hmm. tennis is for me is the best sport ever because it's the most coolest. But for sure, I have been thankful that there's a lot of science behind it showing that increased longevity and a lot of other stuff. But uh, I want to become a better tennis player. And how do I do it? I watch the players play. I play the sport. I study the sport. You know, there's no free meal, as people say in Brazil. There, there, nothing comes for free. You have to work it. And people want to, uh, you know, they sometimes they watch me, you know, being a raw foodist and they think that they're going to become a raw foodist from night to day. And it doesn't work like that. You know, like it's like me watching a tango uh, uh, dancer, a professional tango dancer. I think like, wow, that's insane. That's so cool. I want to learn that. But if the guy shows me one tango step, I cannot reproduce it. I would take like 10 years to, to tango like he does it. So people must be aware that if you want something, you have to put an effort to it. There's no free lunch. Yeah. Study, 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 natural hygiene, practice, practice, practice. In five years, you'll be a lot better in terms of co comprehension and also in applying uh, healthful living to your daily life. There's no other way around. I love that. All right. Thank you for sharing that. And, and guys, uh, as always, for the Q&A session, um, I'm giving away, for somebody that asks a question, uh, you'll be in the, the drawing to pick up a, I'll send you an ebook copy of 21 Day Raw Transformation Program. So uh, be sure to get your questions in the chat box right now. We're going to head over into the Q&A room. Here we go. All right. So yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll just take uh, however many questions we have for over the next few minutes uh, for Dr. Carassa. And um, yeah, uh, first up, Mallory would like to know what kind of water do you recommend? Fruits and vegetables. <laughs> because it, that well, we, we have a science term that is called the green liver. So plants actually can detoxify heavy metals and petrochemicals in the food, in, in the soil. So the cleanest water we can get in the planet nowadays comes from the food we eat. So if you don't eat salt, if you don't cook your food, if you don't eat overeat with, in foods that are low in water content, you're going to get most of your water from the foods you eat from the plants you eat so that's how i get most of my water the 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 rest amount of water for me and there's that's not a scientific consensus or that's not a, a recommendation i drink from coconut waters i mm. rarely drink uh, water but if i need if i'm in the middle of a tennis match i'm not going to stop it and try to find a coconut so i can drink it so i can drink water i'm not saying i never drink it but my water consumption is way lower than most people and way lower than it was one day before becoming a raw fooder. Because yesterday, I had watermelon for lunch. 
So watermelon is like 95% water. And if you, I eat two kilos of watermelon, that is like one, one liter and 900 ml. So. Nice. <clears throat> what about, uh, do you have a preference for what you, what, when you do a water fast, which kind of water? Sure. Uh, I try to distill water, reverse osmosis water, or even uh, uh, Shelton used to suggest that you 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 heat your water, you 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 become you, you you boil your water. That's all you know. The cleanest you can get. You get mm. a water filter. You know it's not going to be the main issue nowadays, but for sure, all this water that we have been getting to us are coming with microplastic, dioxins, heavy metals. So it's a it's a deal, but you know you cannot. I, I think there's no perfection in that that part. In doing fasting, I don't worry as much. Okay, great. Uh, Sonia says, enjoying this chat, uh, what are your thoughts on urine therapy on a raw vegan diet? Uh, they say, I've been a fruitarian for several years, and urine therapy has taken this way of eating to the next level. What are your thoughts on that? I don't agree with it. I think urine is actually excretion of, of old material of, of like waste. So I don't, there's no science to back it up. I don't see a logical path to it, but you know, if she's good with it, you know, I, I'm okay. I, I wouldn't drink my urine. That's for sure. But like, uh, anyway, I, I think people are, I, are, are, are attaching themselves to details, you know, like, for example, uh, I connect, I change the, the mic. You, you got, you can still hear me good. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Connecting the, the, the power cable. Oh yeah. So focus on the big things, exercise, uh, sunshine, sleep and diets. And probably that's why the urine therapies have is have, uh, helping because people don't understand that they're changing their whole lifestyle and mistake one thing, one benefit from other call from other thing that it's not actually the. It's like my mom when I was young; she was saying that homeopathy cured me. Nothing cured me. My body regenerated. The homeopathy was just less damage, less stressful, less non-natural to my body than allopathic medicine. That's why my body regenerated. It's not because of homeopathy. It's the same thing for me, my humble opinion, for urine therapy. But I'm sorry if I'm too straightforward and too, you know, I, I don't believe it. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Tessa says she watched the documentary. I think the one that, uh, was it at Tanglewood? Um, yeah. So yeah, she said she had watched that, so that's great. Um, let's see. Uh, Tessa asks, do you believe in colonics? No. Uh, I think I have too little experience to to talk about it, but uh, I, pre I pretty much base myself on Herbert Shelton's views. Uh, he used to do a lot of colonic irrigation when he was back. He was starting his career, and he saw that the people that do the most colonic, the uh, hydrocolony, uh, enemas, etc., they all have worse bowel movements and worse uh, health, uh, bowel health than the people that didn't do it. Mm. They, the old hygienists believe that you can, you know. The body is self-healing, self-controlling, self. Uh, he he needs you to provide the biological needs, and he can do all by himself. So no, I don't believe it. I don't. I don't think it's good. But I don't have. You know, there's no scientific data to support it. There's no support uh, against it or uh, in favor of it. At least not to my knowledge. Mm. All right. Uh, Chantel asks, what about fasting for perimenopause and menopause when our sex hormones are de decreasing? They are decreasing because people are not living their the ideal lifestyle. So, for example, we, we know that the anthropoid primates, for example, female anthropoid primates, 
they have the menopause three years before dying. Their lifespan is like 75 years. They have the menopause at 72. So that means like human beings could go into menopause at 110 or something like that because we have a higher lifespan than chimps. So, you know, I don't believe that going to menopause that early is normal and having the loss of uh, hormone. For example, we have we know that there, there are men out there with 80 years of age with the testosterone levels of men of 20 years of age. Mm. And we know that the opposite is also true. There's men with 20 years of age who are having the testosterone as low as an 80 year old. So uh, the biosynthesis of hormones are controlled by the body according to your health. So the more you age, the less biosynthesis is for hormones. So uh, there's a lot of, there's research on methionine and fecundation of, of reproductive system of, of drosophilias, of small fruit flies. When they eat a higher protein intake, then the reproductive system shuts down in an earlier age. For sure, it's those affiliates. They don't live too long, right? It's a short-lived animal. Mm -hmm. But still, we can see a lot of uh, examples in in, in in a lot of animals, etc. So uh, I would say to the person, first, focus in healthful living. And then uh, if that is not enough, I would for sure try to, a fasting facility, try to look for True North or other fasting center to, you know, but I, I don't say for sure. Fasting reju rejuvenates, renews. So for sure, would help with your hormones. But do, just don't focus on fasting. That's what I mean. Mm. All right. Thank you. But there's I, I haven't seen data. I haven't seen scientific data about fasting and menopause. Okay. All right. Thanks for the questions, everybody. These are great questions. Uh, Mallory would like to know, uh, should we be taking B12? Yes, for sure. You can die of B12 deficiency. Don't believe that your vegan diet is providing you B12 because it isn't. Yeah, that, that's a dangerous thing. And I, I did the same mistake back then and I regret it. It was the only big mistake. The only mistake I actually done it that, you know, like it got me into big trouble. The only issue that I had with in 70 years was B12. So for my patients, what I suggest actually is be aware of B12. If you're not, you know, if you're, it's not doing well, if you're not aware, consider, although I'm a vegan in my heart, consider introducing a little bit of animal products once in there because like the blue zones, you can see a lot of data like a, uh, Furman talking about it as well, like uh, some medical vegan doctors that have treated vegans for a long time. It can go wrong. Don't don't think it's, you know, B12 comes from like organic food or, you know, like I don't eat cooked food. So that that's not correct. Sure. Thanks. Um, do you have a recommend, do you have a preferred like supplement uh, type of B12 that you that you like? Yeah, technically, I cannot recommend a, a, a specific brand because of mm -hmm. uh, the legislation in Brazil for the regional nutritionals, nutrition council doesn't allow us to. But the yeah. usual recommendations is like a thousand micrograms of preferably cyanocobalamin to, to two times a week to maintain good levels, but higher than that to regain better, uh, to correct deficiencies. So, but that's specific. I cannot talk too much about it. You know, it, it's yeah. better to find a health professional to help you with it. Sure. I can attend patients online and in private sessions also. And I run retreats in Brazil that people can come and ask any, any kind of health question as well. You know. Terrific. Yeah. And I've got that all linked down in the description box as well. So everybody can go check out your retreats and, and coaching and all that. So um, everybody check that out for sure. Um, Sylvia says, would you choose Tanglewood or True North for a first water fast? <laughs> That's tough. That's tough because I love Tanglewood for the place, for Costa Rica, for the environment, and for the fruits. Lauren's quite, Lauren's right on the spot with the frugivore diet, mm -hmm. like with the idea. But 
I had some, I, I can, I love Lauren and I love uh, Tango. Uh, I love both centers. I never been to True North, but I admire uh, Goldhammer as well as a lot. Mm -hmm. But I don't agree with Goldhammer talking about cooked food. You know, I, I think he's wrong in that part. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think Lauren goes to too extreme with the frugivore diet. Like he doesn't allow people to eat spinach in the refeeding process. He doesn't allow, he's too strict. You know, I, I don't think it's right as well. So it's hard, a uh, hard choice because if you go to Tango, if you go to True North, you're going to be in a city and you're not going to be refeeding on primarily fruits and vegetables. And that was a big part eating Guanabana, Soursop uh, in Costa Rica, like those mm. Soursops were ah, oh, wow. and have as much as I wanted of coconut water, like four, like two liters of coconut water every meal during the refeeding process was like insane you know like so there's benefits to one or to the other i can't say you know choose one or the other but i had uh in my portuguese documentary of the the fasting tango i co i comment a little bit of the things that i didn't like in true in tango but right mm -hmm. the repeating process etc but you know uh, as a health professional i have to recommend you to go to a medical supervisor water fast i cannot recommend anything else than that but sure. for myself even i went to take wood okay great thank you uh music monster man said uh i just did a 10-day water fast and four-day juice fast at true north it was a great experience Goldhammer was a cool guy and very knowledgeable so there's a yeah. comment for that um Let's I, see. I had my issues with Lauren, like not allowing us to eat sweet fruits, and you know, like I wanted to eat durian afterwards. I mean, <laughs> I wanted to eat my mace support it. Yeah. And he was like seeing that as a you know big no, like a big issue, like to the refeeding process. And I, it's fruits. It's just a little bit sweeter, you know. Like yeah. I would eat less of that and be more satiated, and that's okay, you know. Like yeah. I don't see it as a big deal. So uh, that that was somewhat boring you know some and too much water too much emphasis on drinking too much water i okay. think five liters a day is, you know it's not needed i have my issues but you yeah. know i i love the fasting over there as well so i can't complain sure sure um all right fiona says do you have any experience with dry fasting are you familiar with the work of dr filanov from russia no, I don't have experience with water fasting. I there's no science to back it up, like real science, right? Uh, just anecdotal evidence, and mm -hmm. I think it's dangerous actually, because you know we have pioneers in the raw food movement, like a uh, uh, Lockhart, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure one of the reasons that he died was because of his emphasis on water fasting. One of the reasons, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you know. Uh, I don't agree with it. I don't see any benefits over water fasting. All animals drink all fast with water. You know, and, and human beings always are trying to, you know, come up with crazy nonsense ideas. You know, it's dangerous. Just drink your water as thirst the man, as Herbert Shelton used to say. We need water for detoxifying, for repairing. All metabolic process needs water. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, I, I, think I've most a lot of people are probably dealing with health issues because of dehydration and so to to dehydrate the body even more seems counterintuitive to me so yeah. um all right let's see um music monsters man says during refeeding i ignored their recommendations to eat cooked starches and just went for the fruit uh, fruit salad and green juice instead. <laughs> so <there you laughs> nice. I would do the same. I would do the same. So, yeah. <laughs> but I, I just man, I, I know, I know you can uh, uh, just eat fruits and vegetables. But I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know how how strict he would be about the starches and uh -huh. also the variety of the fruits in Costa Rica yeah. is for sure higher. The quality is higher. So uh, that's you know. Uh, I'm just a little short in time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yep. That was the last question. 
So, yep. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Uh, and truly, you shared so much great information, uh, really valuable stuff. So thank you so much. And, and thank you, everybody, for being here with us and asking your great questions and being you know, engaged in this conversation. Uh, follow Dr. Carasa at the links. I got his links down in the description box below. Uh, and yeah, just really appreciate it. And it's so nice to meet you. And I hope we can uh, have you on the show again at some point. For sure, it will be my pleasure. Just invite me and I'll be here for sure. We'll be uh, love to meet one day and come back to uh, United States to teach. Uh, I once went to the Woodstock Fruit Festival in 2019, so it was pretty good, like, you know, uh, going there to teach to the American audience, to the English speaking audience. So that's one of my main goals now, to spread my work to English and, you know, get the message out there uh if you guys are interested in my work read the first book that's available soon there will be more there's dr Corasa raw food nutritionist in tiktok instagram and youtube uh the accounts are small the, the production of the contents is you know less less but still i'm putting content out there so you, got, you guys can get the can watch Terrific. Yeah, you're, you're a much needed voice uh, in, in the community. So I'm glad that you're getting into the English uh, community. So yeah, that's terrific. So uh, again, thanks, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. And also stick around or in a half hour, we'll be having the game show. So come back and, and get ready for some fun with the game show. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Carasa. Really appreciate it. Thank you. See you. Uh, see you, everybody.